going on. I get back from Japan. We go straight into invitational prep and Corvette reveal. But there's been so much going on that right when we got back, I didn't even get to chill with Nick and give you guys all the updates of everything he was working on while I was in Japan for two weeks. Now the biggest project while I was gone was basically converting and saying goodbye to Sailor 7. Sailor 7 has a brand new chassis and it completely moved over what, the heart and soul of Sailor 7 and the guts of Sailor 7 into her brand new home. And we're gonna go over all the updates with Nick, everything that's been done so far, what's coming up, and what we're gonna work on today. Let's start with a proper goodbye and send off to the former Sailor 7 chassis. Pete's coming to say goodbye too. Come on, Pete. Well, yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> Nick was busy yeah. while we were in Japan. This definitely did not look like this. This thing has been fully gutted and everything useful taken out. We got the new glass, very rare, yeah. hard to find. Took Nature that out. That. Got the S5 taillights out. We know we need the, wow, which is on the ground. It's literally just sitting on the ground. Oh point. my gosh. You and happy was, to say goodbye? Yeah, no, I was definitely happy to uh, not. I, so like we were first starting off, I started by cleaning the whole car and I was like, we looked further and we were like, maybe not try to fix this, you know? Yeah. That was the original plan. We were trying to just fix it and make it work, but looking further and further into it, there's no way. And going forward, we're trying to elevate the quality of the builds that we have. So we're taking four R7 FCs and gonna make two really, really good ones. And this one, just the amount of time that it would have taken to cut the old cage out, you know, fits all the welding areas. There's a bunch of holes and stuff in here too. It was on fire in the front. There's a bunch of just OEM brackets and stuff that's bent and destroyed. It's yeah. just, it just wasn't great. And we got really bad lucky. Bad starting point. Yeah, bad starting point. And we got really lucky. We found an awesome new shell yep. in the 12th hour, literally a few hours before yeah, I left for Japan. <laughs> and yeah, that was the idea to get rid of this shell and make a nice new one that's more of a street drift approach. Yeah, this car could never really be a street car. It was just too far gone in that aspect. So having something that's more multi-purpose instead of just having another RX-7 drift car that's only track use, yeah. it's gonna be better just in the long run, so. And we definitely could have made this one work, but yeah. it would have required a lot more time and money to just get it to where this other shell is giving us a much better starting point. Absolutely, absolutely, so. So this is the official goodbye. Yep. Um, not really. sure what we're gonna do with this, whether it's <laughs> art or I think you know, someone might want to pitch it up, but yeah. I was yeah. hoping to like hang it off a tree as like a Christmas <laughs> ornament or something. But yeah. yeah. For now, it'll just kind of sit in the corner and uh, this is it. <laughs> Doghouse? Doghouse? Dog <laughs> painted a single color most likely unlike the full sailor 7 wrap which i will miss so if you guys have any good ideas of where we should put maybe some atasha elements on the hood on the side of the car something a little more street yeah. you know not not as loud but still a tribute to sailor 7 come below let me know i am excited though to practice painting a car a single color because that will <laughs> probably be the first paint job that is a single color coming up on the channel pete come on pete Food? Food? Treats? He's eating something. Pete! Rip to the old Sailor 7 chassis, but there are bigger, better, less messed up things yeah. <laughs> in our future. Yeah, so, you know, basically removing absolutely everything out of that car, and then taking all the good stuff out of it and putting it onto this car. Yeah, because so. that was one of the biggest things on the other car. It did have so many good parts. It was just all on a bad frame and kind of thrown together. It had good suspension of 326 power suspension. We have Part Shop Max Angle Kit, that OMD parts modified for even more angle. We already had upgraded 
We had some upgrade bushings in the rear subframe. Yep. Rear so steer delete. We had a bunch of that stuff that was on it. Um, we had the turbo di two different axles. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the whole turbo drivetrain. There's just a lot of stuff around it wasn't done very well, but the heart and soul of it is, you know, good bones, so. Give them the bad news. Yeah, unfortunately that part, not the best, but, you know, Fargus will get us right. We did think this was going to be a lot simpler of a swap, but literally just taking everything from Sailor 7, throwing it in here, Nick getting it running, at least a good starting point. However, Nick discovered something. Yeah, I, like, the, I kept going further and further into it, kind of down the the spiral and I kept pulling parts off and then I was able to look into the rotor housings and I think a reason the car was so hard to start previously is just due to the lower compression that I think this engine has at this point. So Big looking, visible damage. Yeah, Big. very visible, very obvious damage. So knowing that, this engine definitely needs to be gone through and Vargas is going to take care of us, you know, and get it right so we don't have to just, we could have just got this one running in theory, but I think we would have ran into similar issues where the car would have been hard to start and then yeah. we'd have just been in the same point basically. Other shell did come with an extra Turbo 2 13B. Yeah. So we're going to be using that to create a new engine for this car with Vargas, but for now using this one to essentially mock up everything else. Yeah, so we'll build everything around this basically and then once we get to the right point, we get the new engine built, we'll pull this one out, put the new one in and then... was not a turbo 2 but we had so many turbo 2 parts between everything that used to be in the three rotor car and the sailor 7 car so nick just completely replaced everything and you had to order those arms right those weren't yeah. previously on sailor so we have similar control arms on that car we have both of these control arms on that car um and we know they work and they're probably the best setup for us so we basically did the whole pbm catalog for the most part we did the pbm subframe the camber, toe, and the upper lateral link for the whole rear. And for this car, we do have the 326 Power Shockery D coilovers put yeah. on this car. So the rear is 7K. Okay. Which is, I think that car has a 6K in the rear. And then the front has... 12? Uh, yep, 12K. 12, okay. So that's... 12, 7. Pretty similar to that car. I think that's like an 8K, 6K, something like that. Um, so this is a little bit stiffer in the front, which will kind of help um, with the lower horsepower type of stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah, this should be a good setup for you know this car and it being more of a street car too, it should be pretty solid. And they're colorful. And they look cool. And pretty. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that was just a added bonus. So those are moved over from Sailor 7 and then the front here, you can get a better look at the Part Shop Max kit, but this was modified by OMD Parts to get more angle. Do you know yeah, exactly like, where he welded like, it? I think he just modified the lower control arm, um, probably put it at a, a, maybe a slightly different angle and reinforced them. Um, I know this is like an older PBM kit. Um, I know mm -hmm. they, they come out with a lot of newer kits, so this is one of their older setups. Um, so I think he just kind of re-modified it to make it a little bit stronger and possibly change the angle of like the ball joint and stuff like that. The angle looks but, so crazy. Yeah, it's got plenty of angle. Look at that. <laughs> More than enough. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. So uh, it probably has at least about the same, if not more than that car. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to tell, like you said, with the stock body. Yeah. It looks just so much more traumatic. It looks aggressive, for sure. For sure. <laughs> that is awesome. And then, before mocking up everything else, kind of hit a roadblock, because there is yeah. something that I didn't know about either, which is converting auto to manual. You need a separate bracket. Yeah, so there's a lot of little differences on RX-7s that aren't very common, and not a lot of people know about unless you do a lot of RX-7s. But yeah, basically the transcendentals are a bit different between auto and manual cars, and this was an auto car. It only has about 80,000 miles on the chassis, um, so it's a very low mile chassis and all that, but but basically, yeah, the auto cross members are different, and trying to put a manual transmission, you actually have to get an aftermarket cross member 
um, in order to fit the manual transmission setup. So we've got that on order and we finally got that. So now we'll be able to fit the transmission in and then kind of go down the line of things from there. Got some new engine mounts. Yep, engine mounts, trans mounts. Isn't it crazy how tiny these are? Yeah. Like it's <laughs> It's a little ridiculous. It, it looks like the wrong part shows up when you open the box yeah. and you're like, oh, okay. They're kind of like goofy looking almost. Um, but yeah, so these are like semi-solid engine mounts, so that should hopefully keep it everything in place, but also not rattle the whole car loose. Made intercooler brackets, got the intercooler in place. Once again, more of like a streetcar-esque placement, just a front mount, and then we'll build intercooler piping out and around. I'm really excited about this car, and I do want to make the interior nicer and just see what it's like having a dayliable R7. That's gonna be weird. <laughs> Three rotors made it this far. I think we could do a simple two rotor setup. Yeah. yeah. Today, get the transmission in. Yep. Now that our new bracket has showed up, and then compare some turbo manifold options and talk more about the turbo setup that's gonna be going into this car, because it is going to be drastically different from what the Sailor 7 had before. Nick's basically now an R7 expert. Yep, he loves it. He loves it. <laughs> Bushings. If you guys are doing an auto to manual FC swap, you can find this bracket on driftage2.com. We have two different options at the moment. We have one that's full cast from Turblone and one from Artec, which this actually just came out recently in the past month or so from Artec. Now, we do have a project also coming up in a few months where we will be building another 13B, and our goal is to compare both of these manifolds. We're gonna be starting off with the Turblone one, for this car though, so we're gonna be seeing how everything fits with this one. The main difference between these two manifolds is runner length, two waist gate, single waist gate. This one does sit a bit lower, and this one has the option for sensors. So for our first 13B that we have coming up, we've chosen the Turblone one. It did have optional dump tubes that I just got, which hopefully these fit in the car. We're gonna test them out with V-bands for it and a gasket. We're gonna end up having to use this V-band adapter because the turbo that we are going with is a G35900 and currently the setup for this, this is our only option. Luckily, Drift HQ had this T4 to V-band adapter in stock, so we got this. For AR, we have a 1.01 that we're gonna be trying out compared to the previous one that was on the car that was a 0.95, mm -hmm. I believe, around there. And we had the old GTX 4088 on the car. So we're going from the GTX 4088 to a G35 900 setup, which should be a lot better, a lot more responsive, obviously a newer turbo. So I am really excited to see what ultra response rotary power feels like. This should be like the most responsive setup that we can safely run on our two rotor. And with this setup, we do have dual waste states. And within the past year, Dara has actually come out with their own fancy waste states. We're gonna be throwing these on our setup as well. And now, 
We see if everything fits. Yes. <laughs> I guess for an adapter, it's not that bad. No. That's what, like, uh, a little over half an inch? Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe half an inch? It's really about as thin of a profile as you can get with an adapter. Yeah. And V-Ben will be nicer. Way better. The only downside is we'll still have the gasket in between these two flanges, mm -hmm. which is kind of the whole point of a V-Ben is to leap the gasket. You know, just makes it so it's one less part to fail, but... You know, still having that there is okay. And we'll have the ability to at least still clock the turbo into different directions, which is very helpful with downpipe and intercooler piping and all that. So this will be the firing, which goes in there like that. And unfortunately, these dump tubes, the size is just just slightly off. This is just a little bit bigger. And this has the, uh, I forget what they call it. It's just like a flange basically, so it seats against this. See how this? Oh, it's, it goes in it. Yeah, so it's supposed to sit like that. Oh, that's nicer anyway. Yeah. Well, that's, okay. this is how that's supposed to be. But yeah, it's. Is it opposite on the turbo mm -hmm. smart? It must Got be. It. Well. But at least it comes with a nice flange. The Garrett does, so. Good thing you're a fabricator. <laughs> I know how to weld, so yeah. we're good. These kits are cool. It comes with a yeah, bunch of different with, spring options and flanges. Comes with all the flanges. This yeah. is the flange for the wastegate. If you're modifying your manifold or whatever, you can still weld that to your manifold and be able to run this wastegate. It's in all the necessary hardware to run your vacuum lines to it, That's convert it. it to AM line, all that stuff. That's way too good for what we got it going on. <laughs> hey, we're making her nice. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. making her nice, and we're starting here with this baller, this... all Garrett set up, dual waste gates. What is that shiny billet? Wow. That's good. Damn. Yep. This is it. This is like every car person's like dream right here. I love. The moment of truth. Here right, we go. Are the bolts in there? Yeah, I have them right there. Now we just need this to fit. Please. <laughs> and then we'll be Please set. Fit. I'm just gonna go in here and do it. nervous for a little while. I did for a uh, second. I saw yeah. the waist date on the couch <laughs> and I was like, oh. And I'm glad we got a good look at them while they were out here. Because <laughs> you cannot see them down there. <laughs> All right, we're good. Yeah, that fits pretty well. The downpipe's in a good spot. Oh yeah, how is that angle-wise? I'm just uh, gonna, psh. Yeah. It's not bad. Fit a hood on it. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's that's gonna be weird, right? Definitely gonna take a turbo two hood though and put it on here. Yeah, I, need I don't like two. that slit hood action no, that's on it right that's now. Not it. <laughs> not it. <laughs> wow. Probably something like that. Something like that. Yeah, that looks like it. Should we test out the dump tubes? <laughs> And just go out. Oh yeah, let's go. So that's easy. Okay. And the front one, this one oh, no. some crazy <laughs> stuff. That looks a little funky. I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not sure what they were wanting us to. Oh, maybe, maybe that, maybe more towards. Hmm, that's gonna be an issue with intercooler piping. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what. What they're doing for? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm just missing it. Maybe. Oh, maybe, maybe up. No. no. Uh, it, I mean, it really just needs to go like boop, or it needs to go like down there. Which, yeah, that's not gonna really work. 
Oh, uh, one, one for one, two. One's good. One's good. <laughs> the simple <laughs> one is good. We'll, uh, we'll get back to uh, that guy later. Gangster. Just get rid of all that. That'll look great. <laughs> it is weird to me how low the, the turbo is. Yeah. I'm used to it like being right in my face. Literally, right here. Massive one, too. That's like... That's like a tucked turbo setup for me <laughs> compared to the, literally. compared to not tucked. And the wastegates, like the, this wastegate is literally the highest <laughs> point. The wastegates are all the way down there. You can't even see them in that car. Yeah. Yeah, this is a lot different than that. Yeah. <laughs> a lot different. Oh, look at that. It's like almost hidden turbo mode. Yeah, but this is good. It keeps the Very center good. of gravity down. Mm -hmm. um, it's just all around. An easier, more compact setup. It's gotta have AC. It it's like, this high. is gonna be a street drift car. This will be the only FC that I own that has AC. Whether we can make the stock stuff work. You know what? Or it's gonna be one of the very few FCs with AC anyway. In the world. I ended up finding a part out car locally that I got. Hopefully all of the engine bay parts from everything inside of the car is still left in there as far as we know. But lines, dryer, condenser, the hard lines, the soft lines, hopefully everything, and the bracket. Hopefully we have everything that we need. And the compressor to make the AC work in this thing. So I'm gonna slowly start to piece together that puzzle, see if we run into any issues with proximity to turbo. <laughs> but that's a huge goal for this car. I mean, right now it's not gonna be bad, but driving in the summer, in Florida. It's not gonna be nice without AC. Maybe this goes there. I have the, the cheat map to the puzzle. Yeah. Do you want the cheat map? Nope. <laughs> no. You're gonna read it and tell me where it goes. Same. Which direction does this one go? Let's start there. That one goes straight. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> I do think that's the right piece, and I think that it's just angled up, so you gotta pull it down into the wall. That, yep, yep, there you go. That's way too far forward, or is it? I, can't I have no idea. <laughs> um, there should be another hard line that goes out of this now, and then starts angling back down, like a small hard line. Oh, that one. Yeah, so these parts were damaged. We knew the condenser one that has the line built into it was ripped out, but it'll at least give us an idea of where all the stuff is supposed to sit. We got it all. It's Where's the? Shit. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's the compressor one. Uh -huh. Okay. The compressor has two lines on it already. Yeah, so we basically so, have AC. We're good. Nope. We're good. So what I'm gonna do is redo all of those because those are all terrible. Yeah. yeah. But we have the general mapping of like where it goes and how it's supposed to work. Yeah. Gonna be making some custom hard lines on each side of the dryer. You'll be able to route it wherever you want. You'll probably tuck it in over there. Yeah. Just try to relocate it into a better position so it's not in the way of all the other things that we're adding into the car. And that would have been potentially the one line, that hard line that gets pretty close to the turbo. Yeah, definitely right here is definitely one of the closest. This one's decently far away. Um, Probably end up keeping that one. Yeah, we might keep that one. Just changes the fitting on the end or something like that. We'll see where we end up. So that one hard line can be routed, tuck the dryer in there, and then the hard line will also be custom to the condenser. We'll remount the radiator, then we'll directly mount the condenser to the radiator. And that'll have good fans on it, so it'll pull cool air through the condenser and all that. All right, we're heading into storage to see if we got the parts to make something work for all of our coolers. Here, I do have a nice little Mishimoto stash. but definitely alternating, the OG like alternating colors. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Ooh, look at that. Perfect fit. Money. Love to see it. God, look at all this stuff. <laughs> How much stuff do you need, huh? Yeah, that is a lot. A lot That's of a stuff. Lot. Uh, yep, it'll all work out, right? Yeah, of course. It always does. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>